So let's take a look at parametric vectors that deal with position, velocity, acceleration, and speed. So recall that in Calculus 1, you may have had to look at particle motion and how position relates to velocity and acceleration and speed. And so you might have had position as s of x, and the standard notation for position is usually just s. And since we have in terms of x, we just put s of x. So let's say that equals x cubed plus 4x squared plus 5. Then when you were trying to calculate velocity, or v of x, velocity, remember, is just equal to the derivative of the position of x cubed. You get 3x squared plus 8x. And then acceleration, remember, so a of x would be the derivative of velocity, or the second derivative of position. So then you get 6x plus 8. And remember, speed is just going to be the absolute value of velocity. So speed would be equal to the absolute value of v of x. And the good thing is that parametric vectors are very similar because it's just now in parametric form. So you have everything in terms of t, not x. So your position would be called your s of t, your velocity v of t, and acceleration a of t. And your speed is just a little bit different, but we'll talk about that in a second. So vectors are always in the form like this. And then you have your x of t. Because remember, parametric equations have an x equation in terms of t and then a y equation in terms of t. And then your y of t here. So that's basically what your position will look like. You'll have an x equation on the left and a y equation on the right, both in terms of t. So then if you want to calculate your velocity vector, it's basically going to be the derivative of your x function, so x prime of t, or dx dt, and y prime of t, or dy dt. And for acceleration, once again, it's going to be just the second derivative. So we have x double prime of t, and y double prime of t. So the speed is the only one that is going to be fairly new. In order to calculate speed, it's going to be equal to the square root of x prime of t squared, or dx dt squared, plus y prime of t squared. And the reason why the formula is set up this way is because speed is known as the magnitude of velocity, and so you have to factor in both the x and y coordinates of velocity. So looking at number one, if a particle moves in the xy plane so that at any time uh, t is greater than zero, its position vector is the natural log of t squared plus 5t and 3t squared. Find its vo a velocity vector at time t equals 2. So if I were to write out the position vector s of t, it is the natural log of t squared plus 5t and 3t squared. And notice how as mentioned earlier, the s of t vector, or the position vector, is always going to be in the format x of t and y of t. So in this vector, our natural log is going to be the x of t, or the x equation, and then the y of t is the 3t squared. So we need to try to find the velocity vector. And remember, the velocity is just the derivative of position. So in order to solve this, the velocity is equal to x prime of t and y prime of t. So we just need to take the derivative of each equation. So let's just start with the natural log. The derivative of natural log of some function u is going to be equal to u prime over u. So if t squared plus 5t is our inside function u, the derivative of t squared is 2t, and the derivative of 5t is 5, so we have 2t plus 5, over our original function, t squared plus 5t. So that is our x of t. And then if we were to calculate the y of t, or 3t squared, we just need to take the derivative. So the velocity vector for the y coordinate is the derivative of 3t squared, or 6t. 
So that is equal to our velocity vector. So now notice how it's asking at time t equals 2. So at a specific time t, all we need to do is plug in 2 for our t values. So to evaluate this, we can just plug it into this x coordinate first. So 2 times 2 is 4 plus 5 over 2 squared which is 4 plus 5 times 2 which is 10. And then we have 6 times 2 which is 12. So then if I were to write out the final vector, 4 plus 5 is 9 over 4 plus 10, 14, and then we get 12. So 9 over 14, 12 is our specific velocity vector at t equals 2. So now on to number 2, a particle moves in the xy plane so that at any time t its coordinates are given by x equals t to the 5th minus 1 and y equals 3t to the 4th minus 2t cubed and we're asked to find the acceleration vector at t equals 1. So notice how it's already giving us our x of t equation. So x of t is t to the fifth minus 1. And our y of t equation, which is 3t to the fourth minus 2t cubed. So if we we're asked to find the acceleration vector, remember that acceleration is going to be equal to the vector of x double prime of t, or the second derivative, and y double prime of t. So we basically need to take the second derivative of both of these equations in order to find the correct acceleration vector. So let's just start with our x of t equation. So x prime of t, or the first derivative, of t to the fifth minus 1 is just going to be equal to 5t to the fourth. So then the second derivative, or x double prime of t, is going to be equal to 20t to the third power. So now looking at y of t, y prime of t for the first derivative of 3t to the fourth minus 2t cubed is going to be equal to 12t to the cubed minus 6t squared. So then y double prime of t is going to be equal to 36t squared minus 12t. So now that I've found x double prime of t and y double prime of t, I can put those both under the vector or inside the vector. So our acceleration vector is going to be equal to 20t cubed comma our y double prime which is 36t squared minus 12t. And then remember it's asking for the, to find the acceleration vector at the specific time t equals 1. So all we have to do is plug in 1. So we'll get 20 times 1 cubed, which is 1. And then 36 times 1 cubed, or 1 squared, which is just 1, minus 12 times 1, which is 12. So then our final acceleration vector is going to be equal to 20 and 36 minus 12 which is 24. So now let's say we have to find the magnitude of the velocity at time t equals 1. And remember that magnitude of velocity is not velocity, it's speed. And so there's a separate formula for speed. And the speed will equal the square root of x prime of t squared or dx dt squared plus y prime of t squared or dy dt squared. And the good thing is we've already found x prime of t and we've already found y prime of t. So now we just need to plug it into the formula and also include the value t equals 1. So if I were to write out the formula for speed, we have the square root of x prime of t, which is 5t to the fourth squared because remember x prime of t is squared. So we have 5t to the fourth squared plus y prime of t, which is 12t cubed plus or minus 6t squared squared. And in this case, it will be easier to um, include the value or plug in the value t equals 1 first rather than squaring the terms. 
So if I plug in t equals 1, we get the square root of 5 times t to the, or 1 to the 4th, which is just 5, and 5 squared is 25, plus 12 times 1 cubed, which is 12, minus 6 times 1 squared, which is 6, and that value is squared. So then we get the square root of 25 plus 12 minus 6, which is 6. 6 squared is 36. So then we'll end up getting the square root of 61. And that is the exact answer for the magnitude of the velocity, or the speed, at time t equals 1.